In the 5,000 years of Chinese history, there have been many historical celebrities, countless civil servants and generals, but in addition, there is a special group that is often overlooked that is, eunuchs. According to relevant records, eunuchs also appeared in ancient Korea, ancient Persia, ancient India, ancient Egypt and ancient Arab countries. But compared to Chinese eunuchs, the influence of eunuchs in other countries is much smaller. Because China's eunuchs are not only numerous but also have a long history and extensive influence. The eunuch system originated in the pre kin period, and there are records about eunuchs in the Book of Si Jing Zhu Li and the Book of Li Ji. Eunuchs were set up in the Zhu dynasty and most of the vassal states. After the Qin and Han dynasties, the eunuch system became more detailed. As a special political force, the eunuch had a major influence on the political situation of many dynasties. The eunuch now refers to the loss of sexual ability after being castrated in ancient times. It is exclusively for the officials among the male officials of the royal court in the ancient capital. Now many people have a mentality of contempt when they think of eunuchs. In fact, I did not want to become eunuchs at first but forced by objective conditions. Why are there eunuchs? The main reason is that in order to prevent obscenities in the palace, the ancient kings also needed men to work in the harems of the royal families. Therefore, there was the position of the eunuch, and the eunuch just made up for the weakness of women. Because they are neither male nor female, they are called eunuchs. With eunuchs, riots will not easily occur in the harem. The emperor can concentrate on political affairs, reduce the pressure on the emperor to deal with, and the eunuch can also assist the emperor, so the emperor will not be too tired. Moreover, the establishment of eunuchs can maintain the order of the harem and consolidate state power. This further protects the power controlled by the emperor. There have also been many famous eunuchs in Chinese history. Kai Lun, who has improved his papermaking skills, Zheng He who made seven voyages to the west, or the omnipotent Li Lianying next to Cixi, etc. Of course, there are many little eunuchs, who are unknown, Sun Yeoding, the last eunuch in China, is one of them. In the second year of the Wuking Uprising, on February 12, 1912, the Empress Dowager Lanyu of the Qing Dynasty was finally forced to issue an abdication edict. The Qing Dynasty, which ruled China for nearly 300 years, was destroyed, bringing new hope to the new China. But there were also many eunuchs or one of the victims of the historical changes. Although Sun Yeoding, the last eunuch in China, did not have any special talents, he was famed in history because he was the last eunuch in the Qing Dynasty. Sun Yeoding was born in Jinghe District to Yanjin. Sun Yeoding was born to a poor family. Sun Yeoding's family was poor and life was extremely difficult, and his parents became beggars in order to make ends meet. In desperation, the parents had no choice but to come up with a solution to the urgent need to send Sun Yeoding to the palace as a eunuch. Because the family didn't have money to ask someone to do the surgery, his father decided to do it himself. After the cutting, Sun Yeoding fainted and only woke up three days later. The first sentence Sun Yeoding heard when he woke up was what his father told him, the Qing dynasty is over. Sun Yeoding is indeed unlucky enough. He was unemployed as soon as he became a eunuch. This is the end of Chinese feudal society. Sun Yeoding entered the palace as a eunuch. Things became extremely ridiculous in an instant. In 1916, at this time, the Republic of China government had already banned the special profession of eunuchs, but as the last emperor, who Yi could not stand the status quo of such restriction. Despite the government's ban, he began to recruit eunuchs from the public again in 1916. When the news reached Tianjin, the Sun family cheered. After managing various relationships, Sun Yeoding was sent to the Forbidden City and fulfilled his life dream and became a eunuch. It may be very strange to people why eunuchs have become Sun Yeoding's dream. You must know that in ancient China, or from studying, and becoming an official in the imperial examination, entering the palace and becoming a eunuch was the second way for poor people to succeed quickly. Within a year of entering the palace, Sun Yeoding had to do some hard work every day. After more than a year of hard work, during a rehearsal in the palace, Sun Yeoding was fortunate to be favored by Duan Kang Tafi and served with Duan Kang. Soon after, Sun Yeoding spent money to buy a name for himself and join the housekeeper as an errand, formally starting a new life. Sun Yeoding's life has been much easier. Because he kept his duty and was very diligent, a few years later, he was promoted to serve Queen Wan Rong at the time. 
This was a very accomplishable thing for Sun Yoding. But the good times didn't last long, and things changed again. After Sun Yoding served Queen Wanrong for more than a year, in 1924, Huoyi and Wanrong were driven out of the Forbidden City, and Sun Yoding was laid off again. Sun Yoding lost his job after being a unik for eight years. Sun Yoding returned to live in his hometown in Tianjin. However, because he entered the palace since childhood, he was not used to rural life at all, and he had no land of his own, so Sun Yoding had to return to Beijing. I contacted some eunuchs who were also evicted from the palace, bought some real estate and fields together, and managed to survive by collecting rent. After the founding of New China, the government gave them a monthly relief fund of 16 yuan per person. Later, Sun Yoding participated in work and was responsible for the management of temples in the city. He also worked as a cashier for six years, earning 35 yuan a month. After the Chinese Cultural Revolution, he lived in Guangwa Temple until his death. Sun Yoding, the last Dunuk in Chinese history, experienced ups and downs throughout his life, witnessing the demise of the Qing Dynasty and the birth of New China. He died in Guangwa Temple in 1996 at the age of 95. Before his death, Sun Yoding published an autobiography, The Last Dunuk in China, which is a memory of his life.